Hi, welcome to the Data Tech. So today we are going to discuss two important topics. The first topic is what is the difference between data engineering and cloud data engineering? Not just for data engineering guys. It's about software engineering, cloud software engineering, full stack engineer, cloud, cloud full stack engineer, data scientist, cloud data scientist. So I'm just going to give an overview of what is the difference between the normal designation that we had versus the same in cloud. Okay, so let's just pick only data engineering. So whatever I'm going to explain in that, it's going to be the same for the rest of all other designation. This is the first topic. And second topic, what is cloud syndicate? Okay, so this is important thing that uh, we will be discussing. So the cloud syndicate is something only an experienced people like a solution architect or a manager should know. But then still, if as a fresher, if you know all this, right, how the system works, right, it will be very good for your future at the beginning itself. Okay, let's jump into the topic. Fine. So um, just let me take my notepad. Okay, so let's start with uh, data engineering and then cloud data engineering. So before we get deep into this, right, so uh, can you tell me or think about the list of leading cloud providers in the market? So when I ask this, right, you would say like we have AWS, uh, Google Cloud, GCP, and then we have Azure, which is Microsoft, right? So these are the some of the top three uh, leading cloud providers. And if you take the data engineering services, especially big data as a service, right? So like we call it as BAAS, big data as a service, like Hadoop, Spark, Hive, Kafka, Cassandra, Hbase, all these NoSQL databases, right? So these kind of all the service, what you see in the world of Apache, right? So you have Hadoop, uh, you have Spark, you have Kafka, etc. In the world of Apache, Apache means it's all like open source. Anyone can use it, download and use it, right? So now if you take uh, these, all these open source services, right? Has been given as a managed service by all these cloud providers. What does that mean, managed service? So you don't want to install Hadoop, Spark, Kafka, Cassandra. You don't want to install master node, slave node. You don't want to worry about the clusters, infrastructures, right? So you don't want to have things in on-prem, right? In your fourth floor of your building, you don't want to have maintain all the servers. So that's where the cloud comes into picture. And this cloud providers like AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure says like we provide big data as a service. The same Hadoop, same Spark. Same, whatever you see in open source, we provide, but in a different name, right? So if you take AWS, they provide it in the name of EMR. You have managed Hadoop, managed Spark and everything. So, and then if you take GCP, they give it in the name of Data Proc and Azure, HD Insight. So what is the idea behind this? See, if I know Hadoop, can I work in EMR? Of course you can work in EMR without even knowing what is EMR. You can just work in EMR because it's same Hadoop, same Hive, same syntax, same APIs and nothing going to change. Right. So what is the idea of creating and managed service by Amazon? So why do why, why have to they need to do this? Let them uh, give it in the, the like the companies can get it from Apache itself, right? The open source one. Just consider there is a company called ABC. Okay. And they are interested in using open source Hadoop, open source Spark. It's all free. But the problem we hear is the company ABC has a problem in the support. Imagine you order something in Amazon, right? And you get a product and the product is defective. And you will be raising that to a customer care, right? Support. Imagine if Amazon doesn't give you a customer care support. Will you be interested in buying the product with them? No. So now here the problem with the companies are, how can I use this open source product when there is no support? And that's where the company is like, imagine Gautam. I'm just starting a company, right? And I, I, I hire some three employees. And I ask these employees to learn in and out in Hadoop, Spark. And then I'm asking them to install Hadoop, multi-node, single node face all the problems, fix all the problems. And now I'm just going to this ABC company and says like, I have something called Gautam Hadoop. I'm giving a name for my service. Gautam Hadoop, you can use this. That is free. The product is free, but you have to pay for the support. I'll take care of the infrastructure. I'll take care of installing, configuring. You just use my product instead of using the open source Hadoop. So what is the difference between these two Hadoop? No difference. I'm just selling the service, support, right? Updates, infrastructure management, everything. Now, this ABC company is very happy because he loved Hadoop and he wanted to use it. And the company doesn't see a support in open source, but now there is a guy who gives it. Right, now they are happy. Now, this is a gap which being filled by this Gautam Hadoop. And similarly, this is what done by AWS EMR, GCP Data Proc, Azure HD Insight. They give you a managed service and sometimes serverless. And that means you don't want to worry about what is happening in the background by increasing a node or decreasing a node, scaling in, scaling out. Pay as you go. Right, you need more emissions, just let me know. Automatically, that will happen in the background is what's serverless. You don't want to worry about master node, slave node, nothing. And managed services means like, you don't want to worry about installing, configuring stuff. Let me do that for you. Right? So this is where all these people have came into picture. 
Now the question is, okay, I know Hadoop. And if I know how to use Hadoop in EMR, then can I call myself as a cloud data engineer? No. Just because that you are using EMR or data prop doesn't mean that you are a cloud data engineer because you are going to use the same Hadoop, same Hive, same everything. Right? What is the difference? All right. Now, now what is the difference? Okay. When I ask that question, I have to show you something else as well. Right? There is a small story. Now imagine, as I told you, Amazon, GCP, Azure, all these three providers gives big data as a service. It's all the same Hadoop, but the name is different. Right? Now imagine that there is a solution architect. Okay, I am the solution architect. And I want to get into cloud and migrate, move my all Hadoop Spark stuff into cloud. Now I am just approaching, I am just going to Amazon website, Google Cloud website, Azure website, and I come to know, okay, they are providing Hadoop as a service, Spark as a service. And I'm just seeing like, which one to choose? I'm confused. Okay, let me check for the cost. Okay, the solution architects checks for the cost. So Amazon says, I'll give it in $7. And then GCP says $7.1. And Azure says, I'll be giving $7.09. And that means I'm still confused. There is no big difference in the pricing. If I just go to pricing calculator, when I just go, uh, just give the same configuration of Hadoop cluster and all these calculators, I'm not getting much difference. And what I exactly makes me to choose one out of this three? Right, okay, then I'm just planning to connect all these people separately. Individually, I'm trying to call them. And then I'm saying, see, I'm coming from so-and-so company. And I see that you are giving for $7, $7.1, $7 $7.09, whatever it is. Can you provide me some offer so that I can onboard my infrastructure into your managed Hadoop service? And now they provide you an offer because you have a background, your company is very big and you have huge volume of data and it's a very proud moment for them when they add you as a customer. And they provide offers, that's the reality. Now imagine... So Amazon says I can give it for $6.5, right? And GCP says I can give for six point uh, some nine dollars And Azure says, no, no, I will give only $7. Then as a solution architect, I obviously choose Amazon, right? Now, now that means, now senior solution architect says like, we gonna use Amazon's EMR for our Hadoop as a service. Now I deploy all my Hadoop jobs, Spark job and everything. And there is no big migration effort required. It's all same Spark, same Hadoop, same Hive, same Kafka, same Cassandra. Everything is going to be the same. Just instead of my environment, I'm going into a different environment called EMR. And I don't want to be an expert in what is AWS, what is EMR. Doesn't require as a data engineer. I don't want to worry about it. Just I'm just simply getting into it. Right. Now imagine this Amazon agreed to give $6.5 for two years only. Okay. Now, 2025 is completed, 2026 is completed. Now, EMR is rising their charge to $7. And the solution architect says, okay, now, like, you cut my offer. Now, my CEO will ask me why all of a sudden the spike comes in the bill, right? Then I have to tell them that the offer is over. Now, as a solution architect, I'll check with Amazon. Can you able to increase this offer period for some more time? And Amazon says, no, I can't do that. Now, what the solution architect will do? Then now what he will do? He will just try to uh, reject this Amazon. And then he will then move to data proc, that is the GCP. And he will ask, see, I'm coming out from Amazon. So will you be giving me some good offer so that I can stay with you? I can go with you. Okay, then GCP says, okay, you are leaving Amazon, you are coming for me. Then, okay, fine, I'll give it for, you paid $7 to him, right? So let me just make it as $6.9 for you. And the solution architect is happy. Now he's moving to GCP. Okay, $6.9, right? And then they are moving for data proc. Now, they are moving from EMR to data product. You can question me, what about the migration effort? See, as I told you, migrate, there is no migration effort, guys. It's about you are switching from one uh, laptop to another laptop. It's all same Hadoop, same height, same everything. Right. So, there is no migration cost. So, now he is moving to GCP. And 2027, 2028, he is with GCP. And the offer period ends. Now, again, he is coming to the same point. And then he will say, no, okay, GCP can't give me offer. They cannot extend the offer period. Then I'll move on to Azure. So here the problem is not for the solution architect. Here the loss is not for the solution architect. So who's, who is going to affect because of this kind of switch, right? So the cloud providers, Amazon, GCP, Azure. So these three guys are going to face a severe loss because clients are switching between these people because of the offer, because there is no migration effort, right? See, now it's a loss for these two, three people. Right, now they are planning. So all these three, all these cloud providers, I'm not just saying these three. What generally in the cloud market is happening? So now I'm coming to the point called the cloud syndicate. Right, so these three cloud providers, I'm just, just imagine. So these three uh, providers are just discussing each other, saying that, see, uh, like, I don't know why initially that ABC company was with me as Amazon and then he moved to GCP. Now he's moving to Azure. So it's, it's he's doing this between us. 
and we are like somehow have to give him an offer and one the once the offer period ends and he is not staying with us we need to make him to stay with us so we have to do something right so now what they are doing right i'll just pick one component and with that i'll show you an example okay so that is a component called the hype it's a pretty famous component in big data right it's still used okay uh, now if you see so what amazon so amazon has an emr that's a different story the same hype was there gcp has data proc uh, same story same hype actually insight same story they have azure so hive is there and all this so no problem now what they are planning to do right they are trying to invent similar to hive something else okay so amazon invented athena and then gcp invented something called bigquery and then here azure sql right so their idea is we have to give hive also and also we have to give an alternate of hive also right a competitor tool and that can be used only within the cloud provider not outside right so now the story comes now the client abc is started working with emr hive and amazon slowly approaching him and saying hey you are using hive in emr i invented something called athena it is faster than hive you can use it and i'm slowly changing his mind to get into my system right and he is doing so abc is doing some poc and he really likes the performance see it's not about athena is good hive is bad no it's not about i'm just giving a story so don't say like sometimes people will say no no athena is slow hive is faster no i am not coming to that point my point is different okay just imagine that athena is faster than hive and athena is same as what hive is right minimal uh, sql changes are there okay some changes will be there right so now the abc client is doing a poc and he's happy okay things are going good and he is migrating everything to athena and then he started new implementations also and there are some syntax changes are there and now he is like asking the, the abc solution architect is asking so what is the price that you going to give for athena and he says like 7 dollar you give the 7 dollar for the next two years and after two year ends this this amazon slowly increasing this to 8 dollar all of sudden and now this abc says no no i cannot give 8 dollar now let me move to someone else so let me move to uh, abc says let me move to uh, gcp then or let me move to azure then now amazon says yeah you can move go ahead go ahead and now this solution architect comes to know that there is a migration effort because you converted all the hive syntax to athena syntax now from athena syntax back to hive or athena syntax to something like bigquery requires an effort right so initially there is no effort i said because it's hive to hive only the environment is different but now it's not like that right athena is something you will get only in aws you will not get outside the world of aws then what is the point of getting into open source right so now here imagine this abc solution architect has to hire a resource like three resource or using an existing resource and they have to pay for them right and then they have to put an migration effort effort so the amount that they spend for the migration effort is comparatively high than the abc pay 8 dollar to aws imagine there are cases see migration project is not that easy guys the minimum it starts with 6 months of uh, migration period to 3 year 5 year also it happened you know even 10 years i know one company like in the past i worked it's been almost 8 to 9 years and still they are in the migration phase how much effort they are putting into how much money they are putting into right see now here what does abc company solution architect thinks right so the extending the building with 8 dollar with amazon is comparatively cheaper cheaper right it's very cheaper than right hiring a resource of doing this migration now here comes the syndicate so now this aws google cloud azure are forming in syndicate so they are just asking people they are like somehow they are manipulating the people to use their services instead of the open source one and then they are locking it right so the, the clients cannot move outside else it requires a lot of migration efforts so then what is the point of open source right so that's what happening you know this is called cloud syndicate right now now when can i call myself as a cloud data engineer see now you know hype then you are a data engineer just imagine right when you are moving to cloud and still you know high only that means you are not a cloud data engineer now moving to cloud you should need to know the athena also then i can call you as aws cloud data engineer or you know bigquery then i can call you as google cloud data engineer so when i can call myself as a data engineer in cloud you should know their product which is an alternate of your data engineering product and then only you can call yourself as a cloud data engineer so they form a syndicate and they created a new role and now you are just need to get into it right you can you can ask me this question see you just have some 10 years of experience you are making a video and when you know how the syndicate works then why come all these solution architects get into this uh, trap but that's how the system works and that's how people will get a new job people will get the new requirements opportunity that's how the system works guys
Right. So this is what the cloud syndicate is and this is what cloud data engineering. See, I'm not talking about just cloud data engineering. I'm talking about this is how it works for software engineering, cloud software engineering, full stack developer, cloud full stack developer, AI engineer, cloud AI engineer, data scientist, cloud data scientist. Right. And always don't keep your uh, primary skill set as cloud. I never recommend that. Okay. So just let me stop the recording. Okay. See, uh, when you when when I used to say to this uh, this to the people right so freshers when they ask me can I take cloud computing as my primary tech stack I say no cloud is always a side dish that's it your main dish your main technology should be something else See, you are a data engineer you know Hadoop Spark and that is your primary skill set and applying the same in cloud or knowing the alternate in the cloud is a side technology imagine okay you are very good in Athena and that means you can work only in the company where they use AWS you cannot get into some other data engineering field right then you are just putting your you are just reducing the circle of opportunities so don't try to make cloud as a primary skill set never do that acquire some tech stack data engineering or web development or mobile development that should be your primary tech stack and you need to know the similar uh, services in cloud learn that see you can ask me in cloud we have 700,000 services do I need to learn all no don't do that if you are a data engineer try to learn what are all the data engineering services available in cloud learn only that if you are a web developer just know what are all the web development services available in cloud know that and then you can say that yeah, I know I am a web development and then cloud web developer I know both AWS means AWS cloud developer uh, AW, sorry AWS means AWS uh, cloud web developer Azure cloud web developer data engineer AWS data engineer so you can ask me like uh, only if I if I know only the data engineering services in cloud, I can only say AWS cloud engineer or I can say Google also. No, you cannot say. Then if you want to be a Google data engineer, then you have to learn the services what provided by the Google also. So that is a concept called multi-cloud guys. If you take any companies like Uber, for example, the cab service Uber. So Uber has more than one cloud in their company. Just go Google it. Uber plus AWS, you will get the blog, the official Uber blog. Uber plus Azure, you will get the blog, official blog. Right, that means Uber use all the three cloud providers for the different perspective, different use cases. All the companies are using more than one cloud. Right, so if you want to add cloud as a side dish, as a side technology, as a secondary skill set, right, try to learn more than one cloud. Minimum two cloud, try to learn. Start with AWS or start with Google Cloud, start with Azure, anything whichever you're comfortable. Once you learn the service, what is part of your primary skill set in cloud, then learn something else. Start with AWS, then complete all your data engineering services or web development services, whatever it is. Just learn it and then move on to one more, like Google Cloud or Azure. Knowing more than one, I recommend you to learn all the three. I started with big data engineering and then I started AWS and I am currently working in Google Cloud and I am also learning Azure. So that's how it works. You will get more opportunity, right? So try to learn all the three, guys. I, I, I hardly recommend to learn all the three. You can ask me, what about Snowflake? What about Databricks? See. I can say there are 10 cloud providers, but I can give you the priority based on how it is used in the industry, right? So try to acquire cloud knowledge also, whether you are a data engineer, software engineer, web developer, try to acquire cloud knowledge also. You'll, you, you will be having the same tech stack also and alternate tech stack also. You have to learn both, right? So I hope you really understand this video. You, you I, I just made it very clear. And if you really like this video, please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues and my Instagram page is thedatatech.in I make a lot of videos in my Instagram page also and you need such videos not just the theory you need the practical I have a lot of practical I have 20 hours of data engineering videos in my channel you can go and have a look and if you need such videos in the comments just put yes so that I'll come, come to know that okay I should make some videos and I'll get that as an encouragement to make more such videos thank you guys bye bye